So we're here, Ceviche Restaurant with, go ahead and tell the people. I'm Anthony Lamas and uh, welcome to Ceviche. I'm gonna give you a little culinary uh, tour of my restaurant and we're gonna talk about some of this Kentucky brown water that I've learned to love in my time here. We're actually gonna do a recipe with this. I'm excited to have you here. I am excited too. So we're gonna go and get right to it. It's a little buffalo trice. Exactly. Let's go do it. All right, so we're inside the restaurant. It's a gorgeous, fabulous restaurant, by the way. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for having us here. Oh, yeah, it's great. So tell me a little bit about what we're going to do with, see that right there? This beautiful Kentucky brown water, as I like, I like to call it. I love that, by the way. Uh, yeah, so, you know, Louisville, or Kentucky in general, where bourbon is food, too. So I consider this a food group in my, in my kitchen. And um, people drink their dinners here. Yes, yes, it's true. <laughs> um, so being from California, you know, grew up on a farm, uh, learned about agriculture. I was a part of FFA, Fish Farmers America. Uh, really fell in love with, with food as an ingredient first. Then I moved to, to Louisville, ended up, you know, kind of introducing my flavors. But one of the things I learned about were what Kentucky had to offer. Some beautiful different ingredients. Of course, we have grits and country ham, and then this beautiful bourbon, as I call it, Kentucky brown water, made from just beautiful limestone water, um, you know, some corn. I, I really love it. I fell in love with it, maybe a little too much in love with it, because I like to drink it. <laughs> I like to drink it too. But it's so, it just has so many dimensions of flavor that it really goes great in food. And so in fact today, we're going to, we're going to kind of showcase ingredients that I, I fell in love with okay. uh, here. Uh, so, and, and the farmers. So we're going to uh, use this pork uh, from Red Hawk Farms. Uh, it's a red wattle pig. It's the owners of Blue Dog Bakery, and they raise these red wattle pigs. So they, okay. their their farm is called Red Hog. So it's uh, a so local meat. A local meat. I really like to to try and make build relationships. So, you know, I get tomatoes from Ambrosia Farms. I get uh, radishes and things from uh, and garlic from a, a friend called Farmer Fred, which is Holden Farms. Um, and then of course, you know, supporting the different um, bourbons. In fact, I just got signed to a book deal. Uh, my book's nice. going to be called Southern Heat. So Southern Heat. Southern Heat, the heat part is me adding a little spice. I like to say I'm spicing up the, the South a little bit. So it's going to be called like Southern, Southern Heat, My Life Through Food. And we, we got signed uh, from a publisher, Tom Press, in, uh, in New York. And in fact, they started a new show called New Global Feast. And I'll be uh, flying into California to bring some ingredients from Kentucky, showcasing where I grew up and the farms there. So it's a little bit of both my homes. My wow. new adopted home, Kentucky. Gonna it's going to be great. So let's go back to my kitchen. And what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, a kind of a barbecue glaze, so to speak. I'm going to put some chipotle chilies in it. Okay. Once again, I'm spicing up the cell. We're going to add um, a little bit of orange in there for some, you know, nice citrus. I like We're going to throw bourbon in there. It's going to make this nice, like, kind of chipotle bourbon orange glaze that's going to go with this pork. We're going to do uh, some fresh corn right out across the river there, some Indiana sweet corn. Yeah. We're going to char that, make a nice little corn salsa. So we're going to have this pork nice corn salsa, you can have this little spicy bourbon glaze, and then a little bit of couscous with some scallion. It's just a really simple, but really showcases some nice ingredients here in Louisville, Kentucky. So when are we going to do this? Let's do it now. Let's go. go back. I'm ready. All right. So what are we doing here? Okay, so we are going to make our Chipotle bourbon orange glaze. Very simply, some simple ingredients. First, we're going to start putting some aromatics in here. So I have a little bit of onion. I'm just going to put some onion in here, okay? Some onion. We're going to sweat that a little bit. Just very simply, just some onion in there, right? This is going to add just some layers of flavor. We are going to add a little fresh garlic. Okay, some fresh garlic right in there. Let's get that going a little bit. And with garlic, you want to be careful that you don't brown it too much because it becomes bitter. So really, I'm just kind of sweating it. See how I kind of put it on the heat and then take it off so I can control the heat a little bit. Um, and so many people make the mistake of burning, uh, burning their garlic. So what we've done is just sweat. And then we're gonna take this beautiful Buffalo Trace Kentucky Brown Water, AKA bourbon. Of course. I always like to taste my bourbon first to make sure it's good. Are we good? It's beautiful. Tastes like Buffalo Trace? Tastes like Buffalo Trace, one of my favorites. And the thing is, you always wanna taste your stuff. You wanna use good bourbon. You wanna use good wine when you're why do you want? Why is that? Because you're gonna get the true notes of the flavor. You know, when I think of this, you get that nice charred wood, you get some caramel tones, you get a little spice, you know, um, and, and it's just the balance of flavor. You know, if you use a cheap wine, it's going to taste kind of alcohol flavor. You really want to have a, a good quality uh, spirit when cooking with. And the okay. thing is, I kind of, that is basically my mentality or kind of the way I think about 
or my philosophy of cooking is start with the best ingredients possible. I don't care what the price always. is. Always. always. We can adjust the price. The customer's not going to mind paying a dollar or two more for a really good quality product. Of course. So we try to get the best ingredients, whether it's a freaking uh, tomato or it's a great bourbon, whether it's a, a lime, whether it's a piece of garlic. We try right. to get the best. Okay. okay. Now, bourbon. And what I'm going to do is just just flame it a little bit, Ooh, just a little bit, go. just to kill some of the alcohol flavor. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to to pull some of those natural tones from the wood. Okay. We'll put a little bit more. I'm not scared. Not scared. No. And uh, we'll set this guy aside. So now that I've got that, right? I've got my bourbon in there. Yes, sir. Beautiful. And we're just going to burn off some of the alcohol, so you don't have that raw alcohol flavor. The next one I'm going to do is some good old ketchup. Good old ketchup and a little Worcestershire. Yum. Okay. This ketchup is going to give up. Yep. Yeah, very simple, right? Yes, sir. Chipotle chilies. I'm spicing up the salad, right? That's what my cookbook's going to talk about. Southern heat is going to talk about taking southern dishes but giving it a little Latin spice. Okay. I like to say I'm spicing up the salad, or I will say the salad shall rise again with the help of Latinos. Okay. There you go. Just in case. <laughs> Just in case you're wondering. <laughs> so some fresh citrus juice. I have orange juice and lemon juice. That's going to go right in there as well. The alcohol is just about killed off. We'll let that kind of go out here. Okay. There we go. So now we have this nice little glaze that we're going here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to turn the heat on on that and I'm going to reduce that. So what this is going to do is make a nice thing and what I'll strain it, what I'll do is I'll strain it. So think of kind of like a Henry Baines sauce, which is a classic sauce here in Kentucky. Sure. Uh, it was a famous gentleman named Henry Baines and it's basically kind of a form of barbecue. You know, you got that rich tomato, but I, I've added some bourbon to give it that nice tone. I've added some citrus. Um, you'll see with my flavors, I do a lot of that. I like to balance. And okay. citrus is a big part of what I do with the name ceviche. Ceviche is a dish cooked by citrus. But I love the flavors of it. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just do a little taste test here. Well, wonderful, actually. I would not know they need more chili. I'm going to add a little salt and pepper. Okay. Now we're just going to let that go. And while this is going, we're going to cook our pork loin. And I'll do my couscous and we'll cook our corn to make our corn salsa. So let's go over to the let's grill and we'll do it. Let's go do it. Now we're going to create our Indiana sweet corn salsa. We need some beautiful corn from across the river. Um, basically, I'm just going to put that on there because I want to get a little char flavor on there. It adds a little another dimension of flavor. And it goes really good with the pork. It gives a smoky tone. Uh, so we're just going to season that very simply. That's it. Here I have my pork, boneless pork loin that I got from Red Hawk Farms. We're going to throw that right on the grill. Just like that. Very simple. So we just got this pork in uh, yesterday. We get whole pigs in and we break them down. And what we do is we make our own... Uh, sausage, we make our own chorizo, our own bacon, our own pancetta. Basically, it allows us to take this beautiful product that somebody loved, bring it into my kitchen, and then I love that animal just as well. You get the love from the cooking standpoint. I do, and then when, when someone else puts as much passion as into raising something, that excites me because I know that someone really loved this person. So for me, I have to respect that animal. That animal has been raised to feed people. So we learn as chefs is to respect that animal, and by respecting it, we take that whole animal and we use every part of it. And this way, there's no waste. We use the head, we pick the meat, make pig head tacos. We take the yep. belly and we make pancetta. We make our own bacon, we make sausage with all the scraps. The skin, we make our own chicharrones or cracklings, as they say here in the South. So really, you know, it's about respecting the animal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transfer this to the, um, the, to the oven and let that cook the rest. All right. I just wanted to get the smoky flavor from the grill, so I'm going to come back to that. Why that sauce is reducing, I got the sauce reducing, we're going to strain that. I have my pork grilled, we're going to finish it in the oven. I have my corn here, we're going to put the salsa together. So I'm going to go right here to the oven. I'm going to go right in here, put that pork in there. And meanwhile, we'll take this corn back over here. Let's go back over here and we'll put this corn together. So, I'll take my salsa that I have here. He's still going, yeah. Pico de gallo. This is called a pico de gallo. It's a raw tomato salsa. Some beautiful tomatoes from Ambrosia Farms. A little mix of heirloom tomato, a little lime juice, a little cilantro, some chopped up jalapenos. And what we're going to do is add the corn to this. Pico de gallo, once again, 
uh, ambrosia farms, a local tomato, uh, some cilantro, some jalapenos that she also grows for me, and lime juice. And we're just going to simply take this corn, look at this, just right off the cob. See how simple that is? Looks fantastic. And this is just going to give some sweetness, some smokiness, some citrus, some brightness. And that to me makes beautiful food. When I think of the flavors of Latin cuisine, yes, sir. I think of bold, bright flavors. That's how I like to describe my, flavor, my food. You're going to have like bold flavors with some spice. You're going to have some bright flavors with, with the citrus and the acid. You're going to have, you know, some, some um, just, you know, freshness. So look at how beautiful that is. You can just eat this on its own. Look at that. I'm Isn't that gorgeous? That right yeah, I mean, I it's do fantastic. eat this. You know, I have a five-year-old and a ten-year-old uh, at home that just sit here and my little five-year-old will eat this like it's just, you know, they eat this way. So it's just some simple ingredients. Do you see how simple can be beautiful? We have simple corn, we have tomatoes, we have some citrus, some cilantro, some jalapenos. Lots but of flavor. Lots of flavor, but anybody can do this at home. Okay, so now we have this beautiful charred corn salsa that's going to go with our pork loin. Yes, sir. Okay, so to back up a little bit, we have our pork finishing in the oven that we grilled. Nice local pork here from uh, Red Hawk Farms. We have our chipotle bourbon sauce that we've strained now. Uh, tomatoes and orange and chipotle chilies and that beautiful Kentucky brown water. I can't forget Kentucky about brown that. Water. Most important ingredient. Like I like to say, bourbon is food too. It's one of my food groups, okay? You know, you have dairy and you have all this. Well, I add bourbon in my food group. Bourbon is in my food group too. Yeah, right. So Beautiful. is vodka, rum. Okay, there you go. So we're all, we're, so we'll get along here. Yeah, we're gonna get along real well. Yeah. So, so we, then we have our corn salsa here, very fresh. Uh, now let's go to our couscous. I got a little couscous. I think this goes great. Uh, some type of grain. Um, we just cook it with some with some uh, water and a little bit of chicken stock. Very simple grain, but it really goes well with the pork, allowing it to shine. Uh, so we're simply gonna go. I have a little oil in here. We're going to throw in a little bit of scallions, just right in there, right? Some green onion. We're going to throw our couscous right in there. Very yeah. simple. This is how simple this is. We've, we've made this ahead of time. With couscous, you can make it ahead of time and have it, and have it you know, for three to four days. Um, and it's fine. And whenever you want to, to do something with it, you just warm it up. You can add dried fruit to it, some dried apricots, some nuts. Really about being creative, layering flavors and textures. So when you think about this, this dish that I'm putting together, you got this nice soft couscous with a little bit of scallion in there. You're gonna have a bite and citrus from the bourbon sauce. You're gonna have the crunch from the salsa. You're gonna have that nice lean pork loin. It all really comes together. So when you think about putting dishes or you know creating a dish, you gotta think about balance, but also adding textures because food is very central. You see it, you smell it, you taste it, you feel it. All the senses. All the senses are getting stimulated. Um, you know, so it, it, that's what I love. I'm passionate about food and, and to create something and then to see someone instantly happy. That's instant the look on their face, the smile. It's, it's uh, if I can say the word, it's orgasmic. Yes. It's, you're feeling it. You know, the two of my favorite things, food and sex. I don't know if we can add that in, but hey, that's I did it. I said it. We did it. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go check out my phone now. Beautiful. We'll take the cup over here. And I will say one thing is, you know, being a chef is also about being a leader. It's kind of like being a coach. I like to say that without my team, things are not possible. It's almost like being maybe a coach or a quarterback on a football team. I could throw the pass, but who's going to catch the, the winning touchdown? It's my team. Who's going to block? Who's going to protect me when I'm in that pocket? So, you know, being a chef is not always about the chef. Maybe I get the, in the pitchers. There's my team back there, guys. And without them, this is not possible. You'll, you'll see me, if you follow me on, on Twitter or you follow me on Facebook, you'll see that I'm constantly giving shout outs to my team because our team is what makes things possible. Chefs can't do things by themselves. I can just be the leader and inspire. But these guys are the ones that are doing it every day. These are the ones that are keeping things consistent. If they aren't doing this work here, your yep. food doesn't put on the plate. Exactly. My team is what makes things possible. That's both. All right, so we have our pork loin here. Okay, nice. So we're simply going to put this dish together now. We'll go over here, we're going to put this dish together. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to start by putting a little couscous on the plate.
Okay, we have this beautiful couscous. Right? It's beautiful. I have this beautiful sauce that I did, right? Yes, this sir. is our Buffalo Trace Bourbon Chipotle Orange Glaze. And this is just going to add some beautiful flavor. Okay? Alright. We're going to take this beautiful Red Hawk Farms from right here in good old Kentucky. We're That's fantastic. Set that right there. And we're going to do this beautiful corn salsa right over the top of that. So you get all that corn and all that beautiful flavor. All right? And then I got a little bit of orange. I call mojo de ajo. Mojo de ajo is a kind of a orange vinaigrette. Traditionally done in Puerto Rico, served with plantains and they marinate pork and everything. So we actually have the pork marinated in this. It's a little achiote, uh, garlic, orange, lime juice. So I'm going to add a little bit of this because this adds a little bit of citrus tones to it. Okay? And very simply, there we have it. Our Red Hawk Farms pork loin, charred Indiana corn salsa, Buffalo Trace bourbon chipotle glaze. Boom. Simple, tasty, wonderful. Looks amazing. We're going to try this in yes, just a are. second. Now we're here with this final piece. Wonderful dish. So ready to go? Let's do it. We're going to taste this and see what we got. So we have some beautiful pork. I'm going to rub it right into this bourbon sauce, like that. You're going to see. Oh, man. Take this bourbon sauce. Incredible. Taste that. You're going to get the citrus tones. You're going to get that spice. You're going to get that bourbon. See what I'm talking about? Oh, my God. Yeah. And this is what it is. I mean, you see there's like three ingredients, you know, that, that are showcased here. In case you didn't know, this guy knows what he's doing. You ready for a bite? Booyah. Right? Done. I'm done. It's a wrap.